you know, functional medicine and integrative medicine are breaking walls. They're, they're treating diseases that we haven't been capable of treating before. Lupus, inflammatory bowel conditions, some cancers, etc., chronic illnesses. And the area of greatest biomedical failure has been neurodegenerative disease. If you have Alzheimer's, if you have Lewy body, if you have corticobasal degeneration, frontotemporal, there really hasn't been anything for you. And as you know, the trials of medications have failed time after time after time. So we've been interested in a scientific, a basic approach to what actually drives the process. Why are you getting these specific diseases? And we started with cognitive decline, but now we're actually looking at other neurodegenerative conditions as well. And when you look at the biochemistry and genetics and epigenetics and toxicology, of cognitive decline, what you find is that the production, the stuff that we call amyloid, that we say is the sine qua non of Alzheimer's, is actually a protective response to three fundamentally different processes. Chronic inflammation, whether it's from infections, whether it's from you know, biofilms, whether it's from poor diet, what have you, and then trophic withdrawal, nerve growth factor, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, hormones, nutrients, and then toxins you're exposed to, mercury, biotoxins, mycotoxins, and things like this. So these drive the thing that we call Alzheimer's, which in the past we just said, well, we don't know what, it's Alzheimer's, we don't know what to do. So now we can look at these larger data sets, really look at the root causes, as functional medicine does, and for the first time address those root causes. And the most exciting outcome has been that when people improve, they stay improved because you're actually getting at what's driving the process. So 36 holes, the idea here is you gotta, if you have a roof with 36 holes, you don't wanna just patch one. And if you've got a disease like cognitive decline, Alzheimer's or other causes that actually has many different contributors, maybe you have decrease in your estradiol, maybe you have decrease in your B12, you have a high homocysteine, maybe you have inflammation due to Borrelia or inflammation due to various molds. You need to address these different things. You've got multiple holes in the roof and you actually have to address those. But when you do that, we see unprecedented improvements. And of course, for people that don't improve, you want to look to see what have we missed. So that's where things are, are going. And I think that's the 21st century approach to neurodegeneration. So the idea is you want to treat as many things as possible. And again, just as you do for cardiovascular disease, the more you can actually change, there's a threshold you have to get beyond to start seeing improvement. In neurodegeneration, diet, exercise, sleep, and stress are where you start. Add brain training, hormonal optimization, toxin, uh, dealing with toxins and looking at can you uh, detox or do you need to detox? These are critical pieces and they're all important, but nutrition would be arguably the most important because it affects the immune status. So if, you're in, if you don't have the ability to deal with these things, you're not gonna be doing well. There's literally a balance, what we call synaptoblastic making synapses and synaptoclastic pulling back, and you can actually see that balance. And everybody with cognitive decline due to Alzheimer's or pre-Alzheimer's has too much synaptoclastic activity for the amount of synaptoblastic activity. So we want to tip that balance, and absolutely it starts with nutrition. Most of these people are insulin resistant, so we want to get them into mild ketosis, low glycemic index diets. We want to make sure that all their nutrients from vitamin D, vitamin B12, B6, and so forth and so on are optimized. We tell people, we don't want to get you at the low end of normal. We want to get you, we want to treat you now like a competitive athlete. So we want to get you to the optimal ranges for each of these things. We want a, we typically use a, a diet we call Ketoflex 12-3, which is a plant-based, mildly ketotic, of course low glycemic, with a 12-3, 12, 12 hours between finishing dinner and starting breakfast or brunch, 
and three hours between finishing dinner and going to bed. And if you're APOE4 positive, which is a good thing to know if you're APOE4 positive or negative, because that does change your metabolism, it does change your inflammatory parameters, then you want to shoot more for 14 to 16 hours of fasting in between. So uh, absolutely, nu nutrition is arguably the most important of all the different parameters.